The Chestnut Man has been on my anticipated watch list for about three months now. It's finally arriving, so let's talk about this Danish psychological thriller. Two detectives hunt a killer who leaves behind a creepy calling card, small figures made of chestnuts. The series is shrouded in mystery, where we have two detectives assigned to a murder case that's pretty gruesome, and then a little man made out of chestnuts is found near the victim. What makes this case even more bizarre is that it has some evidence tied to another case involving a politician's missing daughter. This is six episodes, with each being almost an hour long. I found them crazy bingeable, because the mystery and intrigue are extremely high throughout. Each character we meet is damaged or flawed in some large way, which I think helps to endear them a bit to us, but also makes them a little bit relatable. The two main protagonists are Tulin and Hess, and they're both detectives. Now, Tulin is a single mom who doesn't have much family, and we watch her struggle to be present for her daughter while still trying to solve this very involved and complex case. There are moments that seem to almost be breaking points for the character, which makes her even more sympathetic, but also conflicted. She tries to balance work and life with a job that just doesn't really allow for that. And the tension that arises in her family life I thought was tough and it's palpable. Now Hess is more the quiet detective. He's a bit mysterious, but he also comes across as aloof. He clashes with most people, but that doesn't take away from his skills as a detective. And I love how driven he is, especially in his intensity. Now, he's certainly odd, but it also comes across as charming in small instances. Another large driver for the story is a politician, her husband, and their son. Now, their daughter went missing a year prior, and they're only now beginning to put the pieces back together in their lives. When evidence that ties the missing daughter to the new crimes is discovered, I mean, it sets off all kinds of new conflict for the family. It's reopened wounds, but even more importantly, it creates new avenues of mystery that just need to be examined. I appreciate the way the story looks at the family's grief. It shows the growth that is occurring, but also the struggle they make each and every day to continue their forward progress. Now, at first I thought this series was going to be sort of a slow burn, because the first episode is fairly patient in its pace. And I like that it takes the time to establish a lot of the characters, as well as provide some background for what's going on. Not all of the background makes sense right off the bat, but that's good, because if it did, it would spoil the suspense. Now, as the show gets into episode two, crap starts to hit the fan, and the show begins to ramp up in just about every facet. The tension rises, the mystery becomes more complex, red herrings are introduced, as well as some misdirection, and then all the while, the characters are gaining more development that could make you start to guess who the perpetrator is. Now, funny enough, I did guess the perpetrator somewhere near the middle of the show, and I'm not sure what caused that guess, but I then dismissed it, and I proceeded to make about five more predictions and guesses and who I thought was behind everything. That guessing game was so fun because small clues would begin to be unveiled, and in true whodunit fashion, the clues aren't outright obvious and can point to a few different possibilities. I love how there are multiple times throughout the show that introduces some new twists and complications, which then add another layer to everything that's going on. Now, sometimes the outcomes of those are a little obvious, especially if a scenario was going for misdirection. Now, when we get a scenario towards the beginning of a mystery series, we can be pretty certain that it's not going to solve the whole case, because, I mean, then the show would just be over. And what do you do for the remaining episodes? But that being said, even when there are items that clearly aren't going to solve the mystery, there are portions, both visually and audibly, that give additional clues to the overall riddle. So the mystery in this was a lot of fun, but the show also looks good. The weather is overcast much of the time in this, so there's a grayish tone to just about everything. And it creates a slightly depressing atmosphere, which then complements the ominous and gloomy storyline. I thought the cinematography was beautiful, and the camera work puts us into the center of the mystery. We're placed far enough away from the subject to just take it all in as observers, but there are some moments where we're thrust really close to the action, which then makes certain scenes very thrilling. The settings are also used really well to put us in locales that I think are eerie. Whether they're secluded forests or dark maintenance areas, each location enables darkness and shadows to obscure objects. And while these aren't scary, they are unsettling, which just enhances the tone of the narrative. Like I said, this is six episodes, and I don't get the sense that this is going to have an additional season. The story does a good job of providing some resolutions, but even if the story doesn't have legs to continue on, 
I personally would love to see more from Tulin and Hess as partners. While they start off a bit shaky together, their chemistry really goes and they become a very formidable team. Something that I enjoyed but could be a slight annoyance is that many answers come before the final episode. And the reason I enjoyed it is because the reasoning and motivations aren't rushed. It's not like we get to the final 15 minutes and then poof, everything is wrapped up and we're done. There is an incredible amount of anxiety and distress that are created in the final episode, even though we know many of the answers. I liken it a bit to the BBC series Luther, where in that we learn who the perpetrator is at the very beginning and then the excitement comes from the pursuit. Now here, we've gone for quite a while not knowing who the villain was, and then when we do, there's still a chase that is full of electricity. So overall, this is an engaging thrill ride. There are points that I was wildly frustrated with or for the characters, but I was also completely invested in the mystery. The story was crafted in a way that immediately grabbed my attention and then unfolded in a way that gripped me and wouldn't let go. The dark story with themes that are just as dark works to create an atmosphere that is sinister and grim, but it also mixed with a very healthy dose of depression and grief. And while I do believe that some of the plot points are obvious and not as misleading as the story may think, the mystery as a whole is complex enough to keep us guessing, but not convoluted enough to make the outcome implausible. There's sex, nudity, a lot of profanity, and some very brutal violence. I give The Chestnut Man four and a half out of five couches. Has this thriller been on your list to watch? I'd love to know what you thought of the mystery in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.